Game time. Uh, I guess what time is it? 2.30. We got a half hour till kickoff, right? So I guess we got a little bit more than seven days and a half hour. Um, but we had a really good practice today. You know, didn't have a great one Saturday. Wasn't real excited. But our guys, you know, they had a little bit of time off with finals, uh, which was important to give them time off. They came back rusty. Uh, didn't come back with a great attitude. But today uh, we challenged them. And uh, we had a very good lively practice. Guys flew around. And, and I know you guys caught the tail end of that. Saw some contact. Guys going down live. So uh, they had a good time. Um, as far as, uh, I guess, our new quarterback coach and, and uh, offense coordinator, I'm sure you guys like to know who's going to at least call the plays. I'm sure Navy would like to know as well. But uh, Tim Salem, who's, uh, I think, coordinated four or five different spots, will uh, take over the, the call duties uh, for the game. And uh, also coach the quarterbacks. Move Dave Bukar up from uh, one of our graduate assistants up to coach the tight end. So that gives him experience. He's been a full-time coach uh, in the past as well. And Mike Shanahan also helped out in the passing game. So um, got a lot of qualified coaches. And uh, you know we're going to get through the bowl game and then address the issue after that and see what we want to do as, as, a, uh, as, a, as a football team. So questions? Is, is Tim a candidate? Tim is a candidate, no question mm -hmm. about it. You know, um, see, how, see how the game goes. Tim, like I said, has called it before. He knows our offense. Uh, and uh, kids have responded to him in the last couple of days, too. So. Have you started reaching out to some other guys yet? No, not yet. It's it's way too early. Let things happen, and, and uh, uh, you know we're not ready for that. We're focused on this bowl game. That's the most important thing. Is win number nine and to be you know one and zero in December here. What sort of qualities are important to you as you go about finding your next offensive coordinator? Well, you know someone that can keep it consistent. But you know the first thing is he better be a good person. Um, you know that's the first thing. Is you know we better have good people in here. Like you know, I think we got an office full of great people up there that uh, the kids get along with. So it better be. It could be you know Tom Landry or Chuck Noll. We could bring them back. Um, but uh, you know our staff's got to get along with them. Uh, so that's going to be a key uh, for whoever that new guy is. And, and and you know wanting to stay for a while too. You know, um, you know we don't need a guy, a great coach, to come in here and be here for a year. That does me no good. That does our football team no good. Did you make an effort to get Jim to try and stay once he told you he was interested in the Georgia? No question. Trial? No question about it. No doubt about it. You know, uh, you know, Scott Barnes and, and the Chancellor really, really stepped up and you know probably went above and beyond what they should have or could have done. Uh, so you know the commitments there big time. So schematically, are you looking for any tweaks to the offense with your new guy? Um, you know, if they can, if they can guarantee me to score more points, that's always I'll take that tweak. It seemed like Coach Cheney had a good amount of autonomy. <laughs> No doubt about it. You know, not, you know, whoever it's going to be, you know, and Tim the same way. Um, you know, I want those guys to run it. I mean, I don't want anybody stepping on my toes if I'm running the offense. Uh, all that does is slow them down, make them second guess themselves. I don't think you do that to any coach. I don't care if he's had one year experience or 25 years experience. They don't need someone looking over their shoulder going, hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing this? I mean, it shouldn't be like that. So they need to feel loose and, and, and call a game. Because of that, is it important to you that this the next offensive coordinator has play calling experience? Um, yeah, I think that's a that's a bonus. I mean, I think you want someone that you know has done it before, regardless of what the offense is. You know, uh, I think that's natural. Other than scoring more points, you're not looking for any schematic changes to your offense. Um, do we need something else? I'm not. I'm not accusing I mean, you of anything. I mean, new, just asking. Accused must be that. <laughs> um, you know, you're always looking for a little bit, you know, better. I mean, every year you're going to take a little bit bigger chunk, and it's the same thing on defense. You know, you're going to add some little things that you feel like you can do based on your personnel and what you have. Uh, but you know, it all depends on who you have and, and uh, you know what you want to do. So there's always, you know, I look for new tweaks every year. The defense, I look for new tweaks every year. From a recruiting standpoint, is there a, a date when you'd like to have this new person in place? By just from a recruiting perspective, um, I'd say by mid-January is, 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 is the target. But I'm not going to, you know, hold myself to that either. I'm going to get the right guy. That's the most. It's not the time. It's it's the guy. Do you feel um, in college football today? I mean. The sort of run-first pro-style offense is uh, becoming less and less common. Are you tempted at all to, to sort of experiment with more of a, a spread system? No, I mean we're we're the minority, I guess. Uh, you know, I like pounding the football. I mean that's that's Pittsburgh. Uh, that's what our personnel has been uh, built to right now. And and uh, you know when I look at who's playing in the in the championship game or playoff games right now, I see a, a tough Michigan State football team that runs the ball. I see a tough uh, Alabama team that's not a spread offense. Um, you know, I mean, Lane Kiff is a pro guy, and, and, and Bob Stoops in Oklahoma. Uh, and I might, my head, those are three defensive head coaches. I like those odds there, too. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, when you look at, you know, Bob Stoops, he's a, he's a pro guy that's tweaked a little bit, but they're still a tough offensive 
got power game to run power plays. Oh, Clemson's only spread team really in the final. What did you see? What have you seen from Navy and how are they different from Georgia Tech? You know, Navy runs a few. That's a good question. Golly, you've been, you've been on target. Um, He's resting up. Yeah, yeah. He had a good night's sleep. Um, you know, Navy very similar. I mean, Ken Ken is a branch off of uh, Paul Johnson, I think. Uh, they work together out of Hawaii and a few other places, I believe. But um, he uh, is a is a great football coach and, and does you know a little bit different tweaks. I mean, they like to run a little bit more load option and. Uh, a lot of different formations. You'll see a lot more closer formations where instead of the receivers being way out near the sidelines or the numbers, that they're going to be tighter into the box. Um, so they, you know, they, they pose a different problems as far as you know how you're going to deal with, you know, how close they are and, uh, and how they're going to block you. You don't really know. Uh, so you're practicing a lot of different things based on who they like to block. So uh, is your game plan for Georgia Tech? Oh, it's huge. I mean, that's a, you know, but it goes both ways too. Uh, for us, it's a major, major factor because they can. Uh, our kids can see, hey, this is what I did wrong. Oh, I see. I can fix that. But I bet you for them, now we're watching probably six or seven games on them. We watched every game. Uh, but for them, they probably watched that game a hundred times. I mean, they're probably breaking down one game. But what do they need to break down Miami? It's not what they do, at least on one side of the ball. So for them, it's a, it's a huge factor. They're going to see, you know, they'll have a chance to scheme up what they want to do based on how we played them. So uh, we also have some new different tweaks for them. Head in that second half, what did you do better against that Georgia Tech game? You know, in the first half we took away the dive a little bit more than we did the outside stuff. You know, and I, I, I take it out here in the practice where you know you continue to watch tape and prepare for it. Just, we weren't getting our quarterback. I mean, it's there's a lot of footwork with getting that quarterback out on the edge quick enough. I mean, those guys take that snap and bang, they go. And I don't know if our scout team quarterbacks were getting out there as quick as our kids saw it on game. Uh, so that was a major factor. You know, really something that we tried to this week. Uh, get that quarterback to get that snap and go quicker so we can attack, you know, the coverage faster. Past week has been a big recruiting week for you guys. Obviously, about specifics, you know, do you feel like when you're out there talking to high school kids, the perception of the kid is pretty different than it was two, three years ago? You know, I don't know where it was two, three, two or three years ago, but I just know what we're doing now. And, and um, you know, we are what we are. I mean, I think what you see is what you get. This, uh, this staff and our players and, and, uh, about all I really can say about recruiting. Can you can you tell us about the three guys that you added last week? Yeah, you can. It's you can. You, you tweeted yeah. about it already. So. Yeah, <laughs> I know, but I really didn't want, didn't know if I really really <laughs> wanted, wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I have to set another meeting for that one, but uh, let, let's do it a different time. You guys know who they are. Read their bios, and we'll next time we get together, we'll do that. EJ will find a time. Whether it's down, you guys coming down early? <laughs> Sound good? Do you expect to have a challenge worth available for the bowl game? Uh, no. What's it mean to the program? You sold out of a lot of these kids. I know you're going to have a good number. Yeah, and I think a lot of them went to StubHub, too, from what I hear. But, uh, you know, it, it's big time. I mean, um, you know, really appreciate it. I want to thank them personally for their support um, because it, it we need them, too. I mean, we got the chance. We got a great AD. Um, we got our kids are working their tails off with a great staff here. But uh, we can't do it without the fans. So that's just something. You, know, you talk about changing the culture and building it. You know, you build it from the inside that building, and it built it out. And that, that's something you know, we wanted to do when we got here. So I don't know where it was two or three years ago, uh, but I just know, you know, uh, appreciate uh, them, you know, having the faith to come out and follow the Panthers down to Indianapolis. Where do you derive the motivation for this game? You know, win number nine. Um, you know, uh, like I said this morning with them, I mean, if you look at January 2nd last year, and moving into January 3rd last year wasn't a happy place to be. This is something that's, you got to sit with for the rest of the year. You're going to go through spring ball thinking about that. What was your last game? And for the seniors, it's their last game as well. So um, there's all kinds of motivation. I mean, the culture. First one, pride. I, mean, I don't like to lose anything. I don't like to lose in pool. I beat Juan Price the other day up in pool. I mean, don't like to lose. Um, so, um, you know, it comes down to pride and, and uh, you're, you know, earning and gaining more respect. Does it help Navy that they played two weeks after your last game? You know, it, you can go back and forth on that through the years. Does it help them? Of course it does. It, you know, uh, they played a game later than we did, and that, that was one, one of the advantages. Always people talk about playing a championship game as opposed to just going straight into a bowl game. You know, for some of those conferences, you didn't have championship games. So uh, I think it helps them. But, you know, I don't know if they got anybody hurt or banged up in that game either, but I know hopefully we're a little fresher. So there's advantages and disadvantages. We good? Thank you. Thanks, Pat. 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 Thanks,